Right. So, can you give us um, your 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 take on the whole issue of transparency and the perception of corruption in Barbados? Well, I think if there's one thing that our administration stands out for is a firm stance against corruption and also a commitment to transparency. We have committed in our manifesto that during our first term we're going to be introducing sunshine legislation, also known as freedom of information legislation. And we see that as being an important adjunct to all of the other things that we're doing in relation to rooting out corruption in Barbados. But it's of course yes, not just the issue of rooting out corruption in Barbados. Uh, we have to seize every opportunity to make sure that citizens are given all of the information that they need and every opportunity to be meaningfully involved in the process of decision making. For too long, um, government has been something done over the heads of the people. And um, we, by our commission on local governance, uh, we're, we're sending a clear signal to Barbados that uh, we want Barbadians to be involved in the process of governing. Governing is not about us and them. It's about both sides working together collaboratively to achieve the, the kinds of benefits that the society needs. So it's not just an issue of, of rooting out corruption, but it's also an issue of empowering citizens. I understand, though, that most people will be concerned about the corruption issue, and, and let me tell you where we are on that. We have finished the work on the Integrity in Public Life Bill. Uh, that report, the report of the Parliamentary Select Committee, is going to be brought back to Parliament very shortly. Uh, we've had one or two, not challenges, but for logical reasons, we've decided to add to the Integrity in Public Life Bill uh, several other statutory instruments because we recognize there was no point implementing an Integrity in Public Life Bill unless we covered off all of the broader issues that we had to deal with. So while we, we could have brought the Integrity in Public Life Bill in place, it made no sense doing it in the context of a 1929 Prevention of Corruption Act. It made no sense doing it in the context of, of the absence of a standalone piece of whistleblower legislation. It made no sense doing it in the absence of um, what for us is another piece of legislation which would require wrongdoers uh, to remediate and to enter into an agreement with the government. So rather than just pressing ahead with the integrity of public life bill and still leave various gaping holes in our arrangements, we felt it was much better to build out the entire network, the entire framework legislatively and present all of them to Parliament. I am asking Parliament, I'm asking Cabinet very shortly to agree that Barbados should sign the UN Convention Against Corruption. Barbados is one of two countries in the world that has not signed this, this particular convention. And I can tell you that the only other country in the world that hasn't signed is Syria. And that's not the kind of company that we want to, we want to keep. Uh, the Barbados Labour Party as an administration has been very committed to this process. So Louis Tell negotiated on behalf of Barbados that particular UN treaty. And it is an important signal by Barbados to the rest of the world that we are prepared to hold everyone to the highest standards and to be held to those high standards ourselves. So I am expecting that uh, by the time of, of World Anti-Corruption Day, that Barbados will finally be a signatory to that particular convention.